Hi everybody, and welcome back to Tech Talk. I'm your host, Abaya, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Microsoft Surface Pro. Um, this particular edition is a spawn special right now. Um, so I wasn't thinking of getting a Surface Pro. <laughs> uh, I actually bought a Chromebook and re returned it. Um, I've been trying to get something as kind of a backup for my gaming PC. Um, I bought an Aorus uh, X5 V8, and the first model that I got had a just a, a build flaw on the bottom panel. It was clicking, wasn't put together right, so I sent that back, and it's going to be exchanged hopefully pretty soon from B&H Photo. So. Uh, it made me realize that I need a backup device for when things happen, uh, when I have problems, and for other members of my family to use as well. Um, so I tried a, a two-in-one, or a, you know, I'm a fan of AMD processors, so I got an AMD uh, Ryzen 7 uh, uh, notebook from HP, the uh, uh, X360. And it was a nice unit. I just certain things I didn't like about it, um, and it just it didn't score that high on the graphics test, and just other things about it. Um, I decided to take it back, and so I bought the HP Omen gaming laptop for my daughter, which I did a review, which I will post soon, and that's a, a great great budget. Uh, gaming laptop, one of the best that you can get. I highly recommend that. But I figured if I already have a gaming laptop, why well, have a backup laptop that's also a gaming laptop? I like speed, and that's why I got it. But the thing was, it just wasn't practical. So for times when I need something portable, when I'll be with clients and I'll be on the go, uh, a Chromebook or the Surface Pro just made a lot of sense. And right now, through the Microsoft Store, you can get a bundle. So this is a bundle. It comes with the uh, type pad that is magnetically connected. Um, but before I get into all that, I'll just show you. Uh, the ports on this thing are pretty slim. Basically just get a uh, 3.5 millimeter jack there. You get one USB uh, jack, and uh, I think that is a VGA uh, jack, and then you get a micro SD slot, and that's pretty much it. Um, so port selection is rather limited, but for a thin and light device, it's not a huge problem. So I just turned it on. And it has a uh, Windows Hello camera in there, so it just unlocks really quickly. The screen on this guy is fantastic. It's really a nice screen. So we'll get into the specs. There's obviously several models that you can choose from, and the price can vary very greatly depending upon the model that you purchase. Considering that this is a thin and light device, I'm not expecting it to be super fast, so I didn't really care about having the, the top end specs. This would be a backup device for when I can't use my main device. So this one comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. It has a Caddy Lake i5 processor and a 128 gigabyte SSD. So pretty minimal specs, but considering uh, the prices on these, uh, this costs $799 out the door with the pipe cover. The Core M3 version of this comes, uh, it is the same price, and it doesn't have the cover. So this is a special bundled price. They've lowered it $200. Normally this unit costs $999, and then you have to purchase the uh, pipe cover separately, and that's another additional $160. So for $799, you're getting quite a, a nice package. If you look at like the Pixelbook 
which is one of the nicer Chromebooks that are available, uh, that costs a thousand dollars, and that comes with a slower processor, a Y series processor. This is a full Core i5 U series. This is not the base model either. This is a 7300 U, which is a step up from the 7200 U, um, and it's fanless. There's no fan in this, which is quite amazing when you consider uh, what you're getting. If you were looking at the Apple iPad Pro in the 12 inch version, it starts again at $799. With that, you get 64 gigabytes of storage, only 4 gigabytes of RAM, and you get no uh, typing, no keyboard at all. So for the cost, obviously this is not a cheap device, but for the specs that it has, it's actually one of the best values that you can get right now. And if we just take a look at how this thing is built, I mean, the build quality on this is phenomenal. It's really quite light as well. And you can see there's a little bit of a gap and that's for the venting on the Core i5 processor. Uh, I, I, I'm really impressed with the way this is designed, you know, it's uh, quite nice. Now, using it in your lap is a little bit awkward because of the stand on the back, but I did it and used it like a laptop and it works okay because this magnetic cover is really secure on here, so it doesn't come apart on you. And it, like I said, it's a little clunky because it's not just like a regular laptop, which holds its own and the bottom part will be resting on your lap. This is more the edge of the tablet plus the back is resting on your leg. That being said, um, it's doable. Now, I did a Geekbench test on this. I can't if I still have the app. So we'll run Geekbench real quick. Uh, I want to focus in because I don't think it's fair to do benchmark tests without the power. On there. The other thing that's really nice about this is this is a magnetic uh, power adapter, kind of like what the old MacBooks used to have, so that if you snag this, it's not going to tear apart uh, one of your ports. Um, the only downside that I see to this device, beside the fact that it's obviously a thin, light, kind of underpowered uh, device, is that it doesn't have a USB C port. There's no Thunderbolt, no USB-C. It just has one regular USB port. Of course, that's not a problem because most of our uh, peripherals use USB-A anyway, so it's not a big issue. But it would have been nice to have the USB-C port because more things are going in that direction. But it's not a huge deal breaker. Uh, also right now, You can get the Surface Go, which is a 10 inch, not a 12 inch, 10 inch Surface tablet with a, uh, what has it got? It's got a 44 something Y. It's, it's basically a Caddy Lake processor as well, but it's, it's like the M series. It's, it's uh, clocked in at 1.6 gigahertz, it's dual core but it cannot boost to any other frequency, so it's locked in at 1.6. It does have four threads though, which is kind of amazing for such a low spec processor. 399 is the starting price on the Microsoft Go, or Microsoft Surface Go, and it has a 10 inch screen, uh, 10 point um, touch just like this, uh, 64 gigabyte is the, beginning storage and it's EMMC, which kind of sucks. If you were to step up to the next version, it comes with 120 gig, 128 gigabytes of SSD storage uh, and eight gigabytes of RAM. Your base model only has four gigabytes of RAM. So that one for 399 is pretty hampered down. I mean, it'll work, but you're gonna be waiting. Um, and for $150 more than the second tier level model, you can get this one. Um, 
Now that's assuming that you bought the type cover and assuming that the type cover for the 10 inch is around 100 bucks. Uh, since it hasn't been released yet, I don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to be $100 for the type cover for the surface go. So if you bought the $550 model, add another 100 for the, the keyboard, you're at 650 this is $799. You get a real core i5. You get uh, a bigger screen. Um, it's just it's a much better deal, in my opinion. So Geekbench scores on this thing is pretty impressive. 4319 for single core score. Multi-core is 8508, which is not the best, but considering it's a dual core processor, what else do you kind of expect? Um, considering the Ryzen 7 quad core eight thread CPU got about 3,400 single core score on Geekbench, and it got about 9,500 on the multi-core score, um, this is a pretty respectable score, I have to say. Um, it's only a thousand points less on multi-core than the quad-core eight-thread Ryzen 7, and on the single-core, it beats it by about a thousand points. So that's pretty amazing, I think. Um, we're talking just specs now. We can run the compute benchmark for the integrated graphics from Intel, I'm not expecting much, but we can compare that to the Ryzen 7 as well. Now, obviously, on this, you're not going to be playing uh, games on here other than like Angry Birds or you know something that's uh, pretty minimal. You know, maybe you play uh, Asphalt 8, something like that. That probably be pretty fun to play on this screen. Um, but serious gaming, you know, you're not going to do. That's not the point of this device. To have a full-fledged OS uh, on a tablet-like device to get 13 hours, they say, battery life, I'm going to say you probably get about 8 to 10 in actual real, real world use. That's pretty impressive. So our open CL score is 21,175. When I tested the uh, Ryzen 7 on the HP, it only got 25,000. So that's not a huge difference at all. Um, Cavi Lake is, is quite impressive, actually, uh, considering. And the screen on this device is just a thing of beauty. Again, to have it such a light package. Uh, the type cover, you know, I've never been a big fan of these because they do flex a lot, in my opinion. However, they've gotten better. This type of cover is better. It doesn't flex that much, and the key strokes on here are really, really good. Um, it is also backlit, so you can adjust the backlighting. It's not super bright, but in, at night, you can definitely see it just fine. So for the money, I, I'm really, really impressed. And this is going to be my go-to backup device. In fact, I'm selling my iPad. Um, and I didn't get a Chromebook. So basically, uh, you know, like I said, if you look at other Chromebooks, like I, I bought a Acer, uh, Acer Chromebook 15, the Acer Spin 15, which is a nice device. I'm not gonna say it's bad. It has, uh, it's really big though. The thing is big and it's heavy which was really kind of a problem. It's supposed to be a two-in-one, but it's so heavy that using it as a tablet is just ridiculous. The screen is 1080p, but you can adjust it to a higher resolution. The problem with that is it has an Intel Pentium uh, N4200 processor, which struggles when you do that. It only has four gigabytes of RAM, and I believe it had a 64 gigabyte SSD in it. So, and that, that unit was just over $500. Now, they're coming out with the Spin 13, and that supposedly has a uh, Core i3 and a Core i5 that you can purchase. This is the 8th gen, which looks pretty promising. The problem is they're still using eMMC storage, not SSD. I don't know why they're doing that. So, again, and the pricing is going to be a lot more in line with this unit once you spec it up. 
you can get up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is something I don't think you would need on a Chromebook. I think eight gigabytes is probably the uh, sweet spot. But that being said, uh, for the money right now, I don't think anything can beat Microsoft Surface Pro. Uh, this particular bundle of unit that they're selling is just amazing. So that's my review, guys. Um, gave you the Geekbench scores. It's quite a capable device for something that is so uh, compact. Let me just do one last thing. I can't really, because I've got fans and stuff going. Uh, you're not really going to be able to hear too well. But the speaker setup on this is not bad either. Um, doesn't have much bass, which obviously it's a tablet. You don't expect that. But. Uh, Okay, let's turn this up so you can actually hear it. So this is at a hundred percent. Since the fact that I have fans and things going to summertime but I have to say this sound quality is as good as some of the laptops that I've tested it gets pretty loud it doesn't distort it doesn't have that much bass but it's not super tinny either so and then obviously the video quality is superb. So, you know, if you want a Surface, if you ever thought about a Surface, I think now is probably the best time as ever to buy one. I'm sure because they're bundling this and selling it to low price, there's going to be a new one coming out around the corner, probably with 8 gen chips. But even still, they're going to price it probably about the same pricing that sees, maybe a little bit higher. And so, you know, if you're going to pay eleven hundred and seventy dollars versus seven ninety nine that's huge it's a huge difference over you know three hundred and sixty dollar difference in price would I like forty percent more power if it has a quad core sure but uh the pricing is what makes this ultra attractive for me at this time so yeah Microsoft did it home run with this. Also, I did uh, updates. I updated this to version 1803 and I didn't have any problems. I actually ran faster than some of the gaming laptops <laughs> that I use. And it didn't have any errors. It installed in one, one go. I would expect that since it's a Microsoft device, but you never know. Uh, so that's it. Uh, what, what an amazing product for such a small package and price. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my next review, which will be the Oris X5 V8. That unit is a powerhouse, I can tell you that. I really did enjoy using it while I had it. I just wasn't going to sell for poor build quality when I'm spending the kind of money that I was for that unit. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm your host, Tobiah, and this has been Tech Talk.